Hungry Hamsters is one in a line of roll and write games by NSV that has embraced the perishable nature of, of roll and write games that usually come with elaborate pads and as you play those sheets are used and then the pad is not there anymore so either you can't play the game anymore or you gotta buy more pads. Here everything really seems to point out to the fact that the game uh, comes with a limited lifespan starting from the container which is a piece of paper folded into a pouch and stitched together. The only way to open it is to rip it open. And as actually we mistakenly also ripped open the bottom, but that's not a big deal because even if the bottom is not ripped, um, you probably not want to use this as a container unless you then uh, add a, a plastic bag and everything fits in a plastic bag. So it comes in this stitched paper envelope and then you will have a pad of uh, play sheets, you will have an instruction sheet and you will have a small pencil and a die. I don't know why they had the small pencil, it's such a minimalistic game but you really don't need that one because in any case you probably want to add more so that multiple people can play at the same time um, and so, you know, maybe you can have it in such a way that everybody has to um, provide their own writing implement. So in this game, we are hungry hamsters and we are digging tunnels. We're digging tunnels and by crossing of spaces here. The rules of rhythm have an unclear point to me that, uh, well, I, I think I modified it or interpreted it. In any case, I'm gonna explain the game as we have played it. So, everybody gets a sheet such as this one, you roll a die and everybody will have to use that same number. So any number of players can play really, you could have 30 players play at the same time as long as everybody has their play sheet and they can hear the number that somebody rolled, everybody can play at the same time without any downtime. So that's neat. You then start crossing out spaces. You need to cross them out. The first roll, you need to cross out spaces in the central chamber here, the one that is a little darker. And so suppose I do one, two, three, and four. And then you roll the die again and uh, people will um, will keep crossing uh, out spaces. The result for a single turn need to be placed inside a single room. You cannot place hexes, hexes in more than one room in a turn. So here I got a five and I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Had I rolled a number that I could not fit, then simply had to pass. If you cannot fit a number, you cannot pass. When you cross out a space next to one of these tunnels, it's not required, but we like to do that as a reminder that the tunnel is now active, which means the next number can be added to another room, but again, following the rule of only one room per turn. So that would be, that would be legal. The rules say, here's the point that it's unclear to me, the rules say that uh, the first uh, heck, heck, the first mark that you place every turn, it, has to be, it needs to be adjacent to a previously placed mark or adjacent to one of the tunnels. But only the first one, and that seems weird to me that you would be able to place one there, say it's a four, following that rule that the first needs to be adjacent, but the other one's down, then I would just go there, 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 and there. What am I, a teleporting hamster? So the way we have been playing it, which makes for a much more interesting challenge, is that not just the first mark, but every mark needs to be adjacent to a previous mark or a tunnel, following the rule, blah, blah, blah. If you're only one, the one, the one is a wild result, but with a limited lifespan, with a limited amount of resources. When you roll a one, you can count that as any number between one and seven, but when you choose a number, you have to fill in an equal number of bubbles here. Suppose I decide to use that as a three, then I would do one, two, and three, incidentally opening that tunnel there. And when this is uh, when this is over, this is over. You don't get anything from a one anymore. You simply have to pass. And again, remember, you have to pass also if you can't uh, fit the entire number that you rolled uh, anywhere in any room. And so for example here, look here when I did it but I'm kind of stuck there. The only way for me to fill that room there would be to roll a one and also to 
use a bubble. If I didn't have any bubbles, then one space, a single space is left in corners here and there are stuck. Now for these three remaining spaces here, I need a three or maybe I rolled a two, but then I'm stuck with a one. Some of the rolls are three, it's fine. Or again, some of the rolls are one and I use three bubble, which would be pretty expensive. When somebody enters their fourth room as they dig, oh, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I entered four rooms. When somebody enters the fourth room, there's a reminder that you start the timer for the end of the game. Everybody makes a mark to indicate that the timer has started. From that moment on, when the die for the turn shows a four or more, everybody makes a mark on one of these three symbols here. Because the game will be over the third time that the four more is rolled after the timer was started. At the point, you count points. Rooms that are entirely filled then, like this one, are worth the number written next to them. Each mushroom that you were able to uh, cross out is worth a point. As for the acorns, so there, there's four, there are four of them on the board and you score two, four, eight, or 16 points based on whether you were able to reach one, two, three, or four of them. You add your points from all sources, and at that point, the player with the highest score wins the game. And this is how you play Hungry Hamsters, which is extremely simple. It's so simple that you feel like, oh, come on, this is like so trivial. What's the point of playing this one? It's probably solvable. And I believe my daughters have solved it, but I have not because I cannot win a, a game of Hungry Answers against my daughters to save my life. I don't know what is it. Maybe they cheat now. That horrible realization or doubt just dawned on me. I got, I got to check. Um, that, maybe that's it because it's so simple. It, feel, it feels so brainless. Like, oh, I'll just go for the next obvious thing. But at least I'm not that proficient in figuring out what the obvious next thing would be. If it can be solved, it ain't. It hasn't been solved by little old me. And it presents me with a couple of nice little interesting problems for those five, 10 minutes that the game lasts. No doubt, mind you, this is a little filler. There's no doubt, no more than that. But within the category of, of very portable fillers, that you can literally put in a pocket and then, you know, as long as everybody has a writing implement and, uh, and a die and you can use a die roller, this really is all you need. If you're going to play with two people, that's all you need. You just bring two sheets with you. You put them in your wallet. That's a game that fits within your, within your wallet. And that's pretty remarkable, I believe. But again, having a portable game that no one wants to play is not that interesting. But this one has the advantage of being within the filler category, very entertaining. Because it seems so obvious, but then you realize that you left a single a single box in your room empty and you use all of your little ones and that sucks. So you're gonna try to stretch your tunnels to open another, another room in case you can't fit a result within the rooms that you have right now. But again, that also speeds up the end of the game. Something is very important, that's how we play. The rules don't say that, but we play secretly. And maybe that's why my daughters do so well. Maybe it's not something sketchy behind the scenes. But we do play behind our hands because we find that it could give somebody an unfair advantage if you see that you are well ahead, then you just start um, going to every room uh, as fast as you can to trigger the end of the game. There are games where manipulating the end of the game uh, is part of the game itself. And this one, I feel that uh, if you're trying to fill out your rooms and somebody has stretched out, if somebody starts stretching out quickly, they may get an unfair advantage. So we think it works better that way. And again, the way we play it is each hex has to be next to a previously placed hex because it's more challenging and more fun. Also, it makes more thematic sense because teleporting hamsters, that would be another game, I guess we could do that. Oh my gosh, like a Star Trek engineer teleporter accident with a hamster. Very interesting hypothesis there. So, it's a little simple, fun game, but uh, within the filler category, definitely an entertaining one. Hungry Hamsters, small, small game, very entertaining.